we welcome you to another in our continuing series of gospel discussions centered on the scriptures. Joining us today are members of the faculty of religious education at Brigham Young University. To my far left, Professor Paul Hoskison of the Department of Ancient Scripture, Professor Brent L. Topp of the Department of Church History and Doctrine, Professor Camille Franck, also of the Department of Ancient Scripture, and I'm Andrew Skinner of the Department of Ancient Scripture. Well, we've had some rousing discussions uh, about uh, Jesus' uh, ministry in the Galilee and the inauguration of his ministry in the Galilee. Talked a little bit about uh, his rejection at, uh, in his hometown of Nazareth, about the miracles uh, that he's performed, and uh, the fact that they um, point us to some individual things, but also in a grand way point us to his atoning sacrifice. Uh, as Jesus continues his ministry in the Galilee, according to Luke chapter 5, we find him attending a feast of a future disciple and, in fact, a, a future apostle. And this, as we all know, is the disciple Matthew, who is called Levi in the fifth uh, chapter of Luke. Uh, why do you think he attends the feast of uh, Levi? Uh, and what might be surprising or maybe even shocking about Jesus' attendance at, at the feast of this particular individual? Publicans are not um, welcome in the synagogues. In fact, typically they are excommunicated from the synagogue because they are seen as abetting and aiding the enemy. Um, mm -hmm. They collect taxes for for the Romans. It's more than just collecting the taxes. It's, it's not like just a, maybe a modern disdain for the Internal Revenue Service. They're subcontractors. So not only are they collecting the Roman, they're getting a, a fee and a kickback from it too. Well, and, and they make their living by collecting more than the Romans right. need to have right. collected. And uh, if they can collect more, way more than the Romans... And they are chief decree, publicans or wealthy. <laughs> then they are chief publicans and they are very, very wealthy. And so they're not very well liked. I think it's also back to what we talked about before is that once in a while Jesus is showing that the traditions and the culture don't jive with the gospel. And I think he's trying, trying to say here is that, hey, I'm coming to hit this feast because this is a son of God. This is a, this is a man that needs the gospel, not just because you don't like him because he's a tax collector. Exactly. He's a real iconoclast. Uh, I, th I think it's really interesting to, to just pause and just see the remarkable examples we see of individuals who are more accepting of the Savior during his ministry. They are typically not the ones who are seen as the religious leaders. They're um, not the status quo. They, right? are, they are not. And I think they felt so comfortable, they felt so welcome that, that they could come to Jesus, even though they were more aware of their sins than any other ones of the, of the population. But that's a good thing. Oh, I think it's remarkable. And I think what happens today, um, who feels most comfortable as far as coming to church today? I would say, dare say, it is not typically the ones mm -hmm. that felt most comfortable around the Savior. And how do we, who are the church-going people, mm -hmm. um, make other people feel who want to come as Levi did, as the Samaritan woman, mm -hmm. um, as the woman um, it, that was the sinner that came and washed his feet with her tears. Uh, it's an interesting thing to see the manner that the Savior can attract and encourage those who are well aware of their sins and a desire to want to overcome them. Thanks a lot, Camille. You just smacked us between the eyes. You know, I, I, it, good, that, good. No, you, it, you go down to verse 30, it, 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 it causes us to stop and think, well, wait a second, are we like the Pharisees? If one of those that we would consider down and out or of the lower socioeconomic strata or someone that we would consider a sinner shows up at the church, do we welcome them with open arms, or are we like the Pharisees and murmur and say, why is he or she Well, here? what's the old adage? If our petty sins smelled mm -hmm. as bad as stale tobacco smoke, how many of us would be moving away yeah. from our neighbors in sacrament mm -hmm. meeting? Mm -hmm. uh, we'd, I, we'd want to move away from ourselves, too, <laughs> I think. That's right. We wouldn't care for us too much. Either. Yes. And I may have this wrong, but I, I think I remember hearing one of our, of our um, apostles in modern times saying, his favorite smell in sacrament meeting is the smell of stale tobacco smoke because 
it indicates movement in the right direction. Someone is there yes. for the right reason. Hev Heavenly Father cares about that son or daughter and just as much as he cares about the person who sits in his glory and his righteousness. Well, you know, I, I think Jesus' response to this murmuring of why is he going to these kinds of people? Why is he teaching and hanging out and even celebrating feasts with the people that we excommunicate from our synagogue? I think how he responds to that is really wonderful. And you see in verse 31, and he says, And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now, now what's the irony? Uh, <laughs> everybody's sick. Everybody. But they don't see that. And I think right. there is a, a degree of sarcasm there that in a way, if we were to, to paraphrase it or to put it in our vernacular, I think Jesus is saying to them, you Pharisees that think you're so righteous, why are you offended? You don't need me anyway. You're clean. Or at least you think you, you don't. think you don't need me. So I'll go to those people that love me and do need me, and I will heal them. And, and I think that's what, in, in Teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith, page 240, the Prophet Joseph uh, says that it's not just that he is dining with sinners, he is taking them and, and associating with them on the condition of repentance. But the Pharisees aren't seeing that part. He's not condoning wickedness by any means. No. He is inviting them to be healed. They re the Pharisees are rejecting this because they're self-righteous and they don't need to be healed. Well, in fact, it's, it's in that context that we see Jesus present his discourse on fasting in verses 33 through 35. And then he presents a parable that speaks exactly to the point that both of you have been talking about, and that's the parable of the new wine. Notice what he says about fasting in verses 33 through 35. They respond to him. They say to him, why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees, but thine eat and drink? And he said unto them, can ye make the children of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them and then shall they fast in those days. I'm here to provide you a spiritual feast. There's going to come a time when there's going to be a spiritual famine in the land. You guys don't know even that you're hungry. Yeah. And, and, and as President Benson used to say, you know, if a man doesn't, just as a man doesn't desire food until he's, he's hungry, you know, we don't know why we need Christ, or we don't desire Christ until we know why we need Christ. And we Christ. see our fallen state. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, and I think there is another great declaration of his messiahship when he's talking there about the bride and the bridegroom and, yeah. and, and John is the forerunner and all that, I think once again he's saying, I'm here to provide you with that, that feast. Which no yeah. one else can right. provide. Right. Well, and then the other thing too, I, I guess we ought to point out, is that Jesus rejects fasting for pure show or mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. for display. He wants fasting as the prophet Isaiah wants fasting, and that is for righteous purposes. He, he would prefer fasting in private rather than you know, making a big show. Of in, in fact, if you go back to the Matthew account, the Joseph Smith translation makes a very interesting observation on that um, because they're talking, well, why aren't you keeping our traditions or our customs and our laws? And, and then said the Pharisees unto him, why will ye not receive us with our baptism, seeing we keep the whole law? See, and this was fasting, was just one part of it that he, they're looking at. And Jesus said unto them, ye keep not the law. If ye had kept the law, ye would have received me, for I am he who gave the law. Yeah. That's a pretty definitive declaration yeah, right there. That, that, that it fits perfectly with, with what the Apostle Paul says, too, about the reason the law was given.